Microsoft is changing how you can create flows by updating the designer. Thanks for being here. We're going to take just a few minutes to cover everything you need to know about this new designer, where the different parameters are, how you can add dynamic content or expressions. Let's get into it. So the old designer has not gone anywhere. It is still in Power Apps and Power Automate, but now you can actually stumble upon a new designer. You just now have the ability as a Power Platform consultant or developer to use either. If you actually navigate to a flow, you can see that you now have a edit with new designer or the traditional edit button. But here we are, you can actually grab your flow, this canvas and move it around. You can zoom in really easily, zoom out really easily. You can move actions around a lot easier. There's also this undeniable Copilot chat window on the right side of the screen. There's a ton of cool functionality coming out on how you can use Copilot to update your flow as you're building it. You can even create them from scratch using Copilot. If you're interested in that, be sure to check out a video at the end. You're going to be able to click on it here. But I've already begun the work on this flow, but I want to go through the process with you of finishing the flow so you can begin to be more familiar with where the different components in the new UI would be in order for you to create a flow in the future. So I've already got my trigger and the different parameters all set up, the different filtering, as well as my list rows here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create an automated flow that whenever an opportunity is closed, it is going to find any open tasks related to that opportunity and then close them and then also send an email to the owner of the task that was closed. Basically just to tell them, hey, you had this open task, it's now closed, you don't have to worry about it anymore. So in the old designer, if you clicked on an action, it actually opened it up right there with the title of that action, but now all of the parameters are stored on the left window. I personally think this is a great idea because this way the different actions aren't different sizes. You don't have to open and close the different actions if they're nested into each other. It's gonna show you all of the actions and then all of the parameters are gonna be on the left side. So so I personally think this is a win that this is an upgrade. You can see here that the different parameters and settings are going to be outlined. This is going to have all of the same settings and parameters from the old UI. You can also show more here. This is going to be same as clicking the show advanced button in the bottom left of each action. You are even able to easily change the connection here. You can also clear them all at one time. This is not something that was previously available. So it is nice to see here. But now that we kind of see where the different things are, let's go ahead and use this to build the rest of our flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the for each task and it's automatically got the outputs of my find all open tasks, which is good, that's all set. Let's go ahead and hit this plus here and then say add an action. I can actually now search for an action. I'm looking for a update a dataverse row action. If I go ahead and type update a row, you can see that it has now pulled it up here. I can go ahead and select the update a row and it's going ahead and add that. For the table, I'm looking for the task table. And when I select the table, it's then gonna show all the additional fields on that table. This feels very familiar to the old UI. But what is different is previously, whenever you clicked into a box for a field, it would then load a dynamic content or a function box on the side. But now you're not gonna get that to automatically pop up. You're gonna be given these two buttons here. This lightning bolt is your dynamic content. If you click on that, then it's gonna pull up that similar box. As well, if you go back here, you do have the functions as well. This looks very familiar to the UI. But again, I personally think this is an upgrade. This new way of having it where it doesn't automatically show up is a win and hopefully pick up the pace of being able to build those especially large complex flows. I also think that this text box for functions is way better than the previous one. So previously it was stuck to being one column height and you just had to scroll to the right and I don't know about you but I had had some seriously long nested if functions and it would just be so impractical. I would always have to copy and paste them into my notepad. But now just this having multiple lines of text is so helpful. I also think it's cool that when you select dynamic content, it adds it to this text box, not as the dynamic content, but as the function as well. I think this is helpful because previously it would add the dynamic content 
And then if you were to copy that, it would add those little squiggly brackets and those brackets then had to be deleted when you put them back into the function. So now seeing that you no longer have to do that is actually phenomenal. But let's go ahead and add the row ID of the task from our list rows action. And now we need to set the status of this task to be canceled. We're actually not gonna do this by hand. We're gonna use Copilot. So I'm gonna go ahead and write out to update the task status in the update a row action to cancel. I've already created several videos on how to use Copilot to create Power Automate flows from start to finish. There are a ton of different details you need to know about how to actually talk to Copilot so that it works correctly for you. The biggest thing is just making sure you outline both the parameter you want to update, so in this case, status, and then the action you want it to update on, in this case, the update a row and then also specifically what it, you want it to update with. You can use a display name or a, a schema name. I've also found that it's important to have the action you want to update highlighted. But now that I've submitted this, Copilot chats me back and says, hey, the update is done. If I go ahead and select then on our update a row action, scroll all the way down, let's go ahead and select show all. And this is a good example of me not outlining the parameters enough. I just said update the status but what I should have said was update the activity status. For whatever reason, Copilot thought I was talking about this item.state code, but I was actually trying to talk about the activity status field. So let's just go ahead and update the activity status manually. So if I go ahead and set the activity status to cancel, then we can move on now to our next step. But let's go ahead and try to use Copilot again to create an email notification action for us. So if I go ahead and tell Copilot to create a send an email action in our for each, it is going to work and then do that for us in just a matter of seconds. You can see here that it did add it to the for each, but it actually added it above our update a row action, which is not what we want. Fortunately, with this new UI, it's super easy to drag and drop. And if we click into this to update the parameters, now we can change this to, we select enter a custom value. Then you're now gonna get these pop-ups for dynamic content or a function. And we are looking for the owner of the task activity. But before we can find the owner's information, we need to get it into our flow. So previously, all we've done is gotten information on the task. We have not gotten any information on the owner. So we actually need a get a row by ID action to now get the primary email address of the owner of the task. So let's go ahead and have Copilot again create us in action. We need a get a row by ID in our for each. You can see here that it added that and again placed it at the top. Let's go ahead and move that just before the send an email. If I go ahead and update the table to the users table and then update the row ID to the owner of our original list rows action. So the only things I really need from this get a row by ID action is going to be the owner's email address and say the owner's name. Everything else is something that we don't necessarily need for our email. And you can actually tell Power Automate to not include that information. This is gonna make your flow so much faster because it doesn't have to query as much data. Now in our instance, let's say, okay, I need the primary email address and the name, but I don't necessarily know those schemas off the top of my head. Let's use Copilot to populate these for us. So I'm gonna tell Copilot to specifically set the set columns parameter on the get a row by ID action with the primary email and the full name. After a few seconds, you're gonna see that Copilot is done working, it's done the update. If I now click back on the get a row by ID action, you can see that now the set columns has been set for us. We didn't have to go and look for the email address one schema name or the full name schema name, it was able to just do that for us using the display names. So now that this is set, the last step is updating this email action so that we can get our flow up and running. I'm gonna go ahead and select the enter custom value and then select on the dynamic content you can see here that the only fields this get a row by ID action is pulling in is the primary email on the full name. We want this to send to the primary email. Now setting our subject, let's say we want it to include some dynamic content on the original opportunity. We want our subject to read open task closed on such and such opportunity. 
we can actually use dynamic content to set the name or the topic of that opportunity in the subject line. So if I go ahead and type out the first part, the open task closed on, and then select dynamic content, then I'm gonna search for topic. When I select that, it's gonna pull it into the subject. And then let me finish typing out opportunity. So then for our last step, let's go ahead and just say that your task is closed for our email body. Now at this point, we have a completed flow all through the new designer. A couple final components that are important to know, you can still update the titles of your actions as well as add notes, but it wasn't too obvious to me where that was, so let me point it out to you. So if you select an action, you can actually go up here to the very, very top and then just type in what you would like. As well, on these three dots here, there's more commands. You can then add a note here. I found that using notes and action titles were super helpful in my thought process if I ever had to come back and revisit a flow. So I highly recommend you continue to use those. Those are accounted for in the new designer. The new designer brings a ton of new functionality and in my opinion, a lot of really cool improvements. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments down below. The capabilities of Power Automate coupled with Copilot do not stop here. Be sure to check out this video here. This is gonna show you everything you need to know on creating an automated cloud flow in seconds with Copilot. Thank you guys so much for sticking to end the video. My name is Griffin Lickfelt. If you like the video, consider subscribing. And as always, I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.